If you turn on the radio, it won't be long until you hear a song that includes the lyrics, na na na. This is a convention in pop music that dates back to, well, the start of pop music. And it also has origins way before that too. In this video, I'm gonna go into detail talking about why this is such a common songwriting technique in pop music, the different ways it's used, and where it came from. Let's start with the definition. Na 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 is a non-lexical vocable. It's a nonsense syllable that has no meaning, like la 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 or da da da. Other non-lexical vocables exist in other languages, but in English language, it's those three we hear the most in pop music. Let me play you a few examples. When you're ready, come and get it. Na 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 na. When you're ready, come and get it. Na 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 na. Hate you. You don't know. Oh oh. You don't know you're beautiful. Na 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 na. Featuring. Na 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 in a song has a number of advantages. Firstly, it makes your hook easier to remember. If your audience only needs to remember the melody and rhythm, as opposed to melody, rhythm and lyrics, they'll learn and retain your hook quicker. Utilising pop music conventions is also subconsciously pleasing to your listener. Because we're familiar with hearing Na 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 in other songs, when we hear it in a new song, our brain recognises it and gives us a quick boost of dopamine for putting two and two together. Let's also talk about the use of na 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 specifically. Why not ba 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 or ka ka ka? Well, na uses a soft consonant, as does la, which is also regularly used in pop. Hard consonants such as ba or ka require more effort to deliver repetitiously at speed. Try saying na 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 really fast, na 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 na, and then try ka 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 ka. It's possible, but it takes a lot more energy and often doesn't sound as satisfying. Let's also talk about why so many songwriters choose na over la. One reason is na can connote a more cheeky mood. This is likely derived from the well-known children's chant that uses the vocable na 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 na. If you grew up in the Western world, you probably experienced another child taunting you with this chant. There's a few different ways songwriters will incorporate na 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 into a song. Let's go through those. Probably the way we see most often is when it serves as a placeholder for a melody or simply fills the space. Got me singing like na 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 every day It's like my iPod stuck on replay Another way na na's feature in songs is not in the melody itself but as part of the accompaniment. Take We Are Young by Fun. Whilst the singer performs the lyrics Carry Me Home Tonight we hear a chorus behind singing na na's. Another technique is to use na na to create a cool rhythmic moment that you couldn't really create with regular words. For example, Casey and the Sunshine Band's Give It Up. The sound na can also be heard as na, N-A-H, which is a casual way of saying no. So some songwriters will take advantage of this and place the na-na in a section of the song where it would make narrative sense for the singer to be saying no, or rather, nah. Take Honey I'm Good, where na-na is incorporated in the following way. Na-na, honey I'm good, could have had another but I probably should not. That na-na can be perceived both as the fun vocable, but also a more literal, no, no, honey I'm good. Another example of this is Let Me Love You by Justin Bieber. Don't you give up, na na na, I won't give up, na na na, let me love you. Similarly, one of my favourite ways of incorporating na na into a song is by connecting it to a word that either ends or begins with na. Take Havana. Havana na na na. Now you know the main ways songwriters incorporate this technique into songs, let's talk about where it originated from. Singing non-lexical vocables has been a practice across countless cultures. We see this in historical styles including yodeling, hindawu, lilting, 
Blackfeet Styles and Bodiberu. <laughs> In modern history, non-lexical vocables were a regular feature in jazz music. Jazz is a music genre that originated in the African-American communities of New Orleans, Louisiana in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, with its roots in blues and ragtime. A jazz vocal technique we think of most when it comes to vocables would be scat singing. <laughs> Scat uses wordless vocables and syllables such as bibbidi bibbidi boo, doo wop, razzmatazz, scooby doo bee, shibbidi, boo bop you get the idea. It's widely believed that many pop styles are derived from jazz. For example, rock. The rock and roll style that developed in the USA in the 1950s was derived most directly from rhythm and blues music of the 1940s, which itself was derived from jazz styles. Rhythm and blues also has its own subgenres that are vocable heavy, such as doo wop. So it's likely jazz and R&B music is one of the reasons for the Nana vocable in pop music today. And that does conclude today's video. I hope this was an interesting look into one of pop music's favourite conventions. Let me know in the comments if there's a similar topic you'd like me to cover. And don't forget, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future content.